Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wolkie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What's today's video? Well, the Galdea Boys Collection got confirmed right after I uploaded my video, so thank you very much for making sure that that video aged immediately. But, one of the things coming up, which they do every year, is the Caldea's Boy Collection, where you can, for free, get a CE featuring maybe one of your favorite boys, maybe multiple boys, and if you're someone who's going, which boy is right for me? Well, this is going to be the video for you, because I'm going to talk about every single one of these CEs. Are any of these CEs super great? We'll find out, <laughs> but let's get into the video. If you have a specific boy that you're looking forward to, feel free to tell me down below. Is there any specific boys that you wish had more art? Feel free to tell me. We talk so much about the waifus in the game, but nobody talks about the boys. You know what I'm saying? No one talks about these dudes. We need to talk a little bit more of the dudes. It's only fair. So let's go into it. So if you don't know, starting on March 3rd, at the beginning of the campaign, the special item, CBC, Caldea Boy Collection, 2023 special invitation will be distributed to every player's gift box. The item can be used to exchange for one of the limited Caldea Boys Collection at the Da Vinci Workshop. And here we have the CEs. Uh, SSR 5, Flowers and Cafe, and Cafe, Club Argonauts, The Dantes Files, The A Nightmare Returns, Round Table on Ice, 4 star, Demonic Parade, 4 star, 3 star, Caldea 11, Supreme Place of Learning, Splat Gun, and Infinite Dream. So, if you don't know the actual login bonus, it's basically, yeah, you just log in and for 6 days you get a ticket and in the end, you get this nifty little hat doohickey thingy right here, which can remove one MP damage up buff when attacking with an engraved card, and if successfully removed, the buff inflict buster resistance down by 10% for 3 turns on them. And then also this, only for one player who did not own it. What is this? This is for the previous year's boys, We you can go back and look for your boys for three rare mana prisms. There you go. So, here's a summoning campaign, but we don't care about that. We're not summoning for these craft essences, we are being given these craft essences. So we have flower and cafe, star absorption up 400%, uh, increases quick card performance by 10%, and if you max on limit break it, which would be very hard to do because this is a 5 star, you get 600% star absorption, 600%, and increase the quick card performance by 15%. Okay, is there any other similar to star absorption? You can, let's see, some cheap options, like this is a free one, the runestone. I uh, can get critical star absorption up by 200%. Okay, that's for the cheap model, and that's easy to max and limit break. Some of these other ones that are on here as well that are easier to max and limit break. And there are obviously better quick up. Usually if you want an actual, if you want this for its effects, it's probably, <laughs> I'm gonna be real with you on this one, uh, is not very good. <laughs> this doesn't seem very good, but it's okay, because let's look at the most important factor here. Let's look at these boys. So obviously we got Ku up here, the first boy. Smiling at you very wryly, what you would expect from Ku Colin over here. He's got holding on to some kind of drink, perhaps for you, who knows. In the other hand, a dandelion, I think. Tell me what kind of flower that is. But you can see here, very good boy. In terms of uh, what the boys in uh, Fago, I would rate Ku Colin every single form uh, a good boy. Definitely top tier boy for sure. A well loved boy. Whether he be edgy boy, hood boy, prototype boy, and boy boy as we know him here. They're all good. And then of course there's also a young boy, but that's one called is Atena. But he's not the only one on this CE, because we also have... Here we have everyone's resident boy, Emiya. And we have the kid boy, Gil Gilgamesh, Kid Gil. Uh, don't know a lot about Kid Gil, because he comes from Prisma. But from what he, <laughs> and based off of everything I've ever heard of Prisma, it seems like it's not something that I would want to watch because either it's extreme fan service, or it's extremely good fight scenes, or it's one in the both, and I just don't want to deal with it right now in my life. I think that's fair. Not saying anything about the quality, just saying specifically I don't want it in my life. And next we have Emiya who is serving up some tea, and as you can see here, Kid Gil super into the tea, this tea action going on here. Emiya, looking great in this one. I think this is a fantastic outfit for the boy. As always, Emiya is a very popular boy. Probably the top boy for many people. If you were going to make a list of boys, 
there's a good chance that someone would include uh, Emiya, whose last name is Emiya, on your boy list in some part. And here he is just dripping on this tea, and Kid Gilgamesh is uh, doing a fine job. Uh, probably for most people, they would probably want Adult Gil, but to be honest, I prefer... I think that, that would create an antagonistic viewpoint here, so I think going with Kid Gil is the right, is the right choice for the art. So I think this art's very nice. Not bad. Three very good boys. I think if you're looking for three solid boys, I think this one will do you well. Next, we have Club Argonauts. Now, the ability of this CE is, first of all, it will give a plus drop of the Nido, the Midget plushie. But its normal effect is grants invinci Pierce Invincibility, increases critical damage up by 25%, and then if it's max and limit broken, which is going to be very hard to do, it'd be 30% up in crit damage, and you can't make Pierce Invincibility better than it already is. Now let's see, in terms of CEs with Pierce Invincibility, there's actually a lot of these. Uh, Origin Bullet is a pretty good one, and I think it's not limited, it's the one you will usually see. But this one is a specific ignore invincibility that deals a lot of damage to casters. So if you're going against a caster that has invincibility, this thing will tear their ass apart, to be honest. Um, I think this is the one I mostly use, which is a free-to-play one. Which you can get from the sweet, uh, from the sweet shop for about 5 rare mana prisms. Um, this one gives ignore invincibility and starts battle with 50% MP gauge. Honestly, that's enough for most people. And that's when it's max on limit broken. If it's not, it's 30%. So yeah, not, in terms of this effect, I think Pierce Invincibility is good. If you're in a pinch and you really don't want to use the free mana prisms to get just a free Pierce Invincibility, you can definitely get this one for its effect. But that's enough talking about its effect. Let's look at these boys real quick. So who, who are the boys on here? I think we have a full list here. We have Jason, or Ryan as a plushie, Deiscurdy, Caster, Bartholomew, Asplicis, and Mandricardo. I said all those names completely wrong. Now, who is who here? This is clearly Jason. Arrogant boy. Extremely arrogant boy. Depending on the kind of person you are, this is a hated boy, or this is the boy you love. I think it depends on the person, but I think it's obvious which one you would fall into, honestly. Next, we have... Uh, man, does he is... Caster has never looked better than he does in this CE. My god. Holding a red wine, looking dapper, looking very nice. We have, of course, everyone's best friendo over here. We got Mandicardo. Very good boy. I like him. I think he's a good dude. I like his. I think he's funny. What more could you ask for a dude than a funny bro dude? Not much, I would say. We have here Orion. We don't have him. I can't get him in the full costume here, but this is a very good touch here. I think that's a great really sells off the theme of here, of the, these are the Argonauts. Bartholomew, of course, not an official, <laughs> not an official uh, Argonaut, but he is a pirate man, and he was involved in the Lost Belt, so I'll give it to him. Also looking very nice here. Clearly only into women with eye bangs, though, so beware. Man and women, I should say. And then here we just have a, you know, very good looking boy. Nothing more to say about this. All these boys look kind of good. In a kind of like Orient Host Club kind of vibe is what I'm getting at. Like these all feel like the boys that would torture the female protagonist who is a wallflower. It is maybe not recognized for her beauty. I feel like that's what you get from this CE. Uh, and then also there's a mystical bear. So really I think this anime would be fantastic. But yeah, another fantastic art. Really good. You get at least six boys here. Some of these boys obviously have a following... But maybe not everyone's cup of tea. Like I said, not everyone's going to be down with the annoying boy for <laughs> Greek Gilgamesh. Maybe that's not your cup of tea. Maybe you find a little bit of Bart's uh, attitude a little bit too much. All possible. Maybe you're really not down with Orion, <laughs> even if he's in bear form. I don't know. But there you go. Argonaut boys. I think they look good in that one as well. The art looks fantastic. Next, we have the Dantes Files and Nightmare Return, the return of Dantes as a, some kind of, I was going to say magician, but it's a detective. It says literally on reading the card explains the card, detective, he is a detective. <laughs> uh, one moment, because I need to sneeze. I sneezed. Okay, let's get into it. So what does this uh, uh, craft essence do? First of all, it is a four star. Increases uh, quick card performance by 8%, increases MP damage by 8%, increases MP generation rate by 8%. And if you get it max and limit broken, there's really no point because it's just a 2% increase on all those, and that's it. Um, 
This would be a really good CE if this included 50% NP. <laughs> but it doesn't. Um, a lot of the problem with, uh... Actually, funny enough, a lot of the problem with MP looping is that there can be a little bit of an issue when it comes to MP generation. So including MP generation is good, but not a lot of them can also, like... Not a lot of them have, like, 50% NP chargers. At least not in NA, at least, currently. Not that I can think of. So it kind of wastes a lot of the Scotty buff, which kind of sucks. Because, again, the Scotty is a fi pure 50%, and you kind of have to shotgun that shit. Uh, funny enough, I think Dantes is one of the very few quick servants. Obviously, there's a couple more, like Pravati, who just has so much. Pravati, I think the Valkyries, um, Dantes, who are uh, Voyager are kind of able to go from starting at 0% and then just kind of being able to carry on from then on, but not every single NP one, not every single quick one can. So yeah, not the greatest in terms of effect once again. I think it's an okay effect, but it's not going to be one that's really going to blow your mind compared to a lot of the other options you have here. But that's enough about that. Let's first of all talk about which boys are on here. So this Crash Essence features Dantes, Fian McCool, and Beardamut. And then it's a part of the never-ending detective, not never-ending, the continuing adventures of Detective Edmund, which if you've been getting all the CEs, you should get these for your collection, honestly. Continue the tri the trilogy, the trilogy that continues on here. But there's not even that many left. Look at this. You got Spring Equinox, Foreign, and then the final arc, which is the final case, which is coming for us next year, I think. But anyway, let's look at this art. Three boys here. Uh... Obviously, let's look at our main boy, our edgy boy, the boy in our dreams, literally. The man who stalks our <laughs> innermost thoughts and made it into a fighting game. We got Dantes. Uh, I'm a big fan of the way Dantes looks, but I think... Mm, and I've also been a big fan of the idea of a detective Dantes, but I feel like he's looked better in previous Dantes detective arts, personally for me. He does look pretty cool here. I like the little effect on the eyes. The hair is equally crazy. He definitely has a feeling of when you look at him of like you can feel that this man is crazy but I also feel like there is safety in his eyes. He will protect you. That's my current feeling. He is a detective. He's very good at his job. Now let's look at the other two boys. We got Dear Mood. The accidental women love me too much boy. Uh, very hard problem to live with. Not many men can relate but he suffers through success and you can see it here in his eyes. Look into that man's eyes and tell me that is not a man who is haunted by women. Thinks about it. Doesn't want to take other men's women, but is forced to because of the beauty mark, which you can see here is highlighted in the art itself. He's also blowing on what I assume is a whistle. I don't think the whistle has any kind of connotation about what's going on. I think it's just a whistle. Uh, next, we have over here, Fionn McCool. Probably a very unpopular boy, if I were to take a guess into who was the top bottom five boys. I feel like a lot of people uh, don't rate Fian McCool as a good boy, and let me tell you right now, I understand. But also, hear me out. He's a good boy. The boy that would eventually lead to Diermood's death <laughs> is not in this form. This is the one when he was cool. This is before... The unfortunate sake of circumstances, which has a word for it, but I'm afraid that YouTube will take me down if I actually say it. But just know, this is before then. This is a man who still has hope in his eyes. This is a man who's authoritative, authoritative, who has not lost his woman. You can see that clearly in his eyes right here. This is a man that this man respects. And I think that this shows in this art as well. Now obviously the thing we see here in the background, the continuing case, who's taken the Holy Grail? Find out in maybe the next CE, but it, is, it does lead an era mystery. I also like do like this art overall. It's also very good art. Continuing on in the, th in the series, I really like that they actually have been continuing this boy series for the entirety of Valentine's Day. I think that's a good touch. And who, what more good touch would you ask for from your boys? If you're gonna get a touch from your boys, always ask for the good touch. Next, we have Round Iron Ice, featuring a uh, Camelot worth of boys. What is their effect? Gain debuff immunity for one time, reduce damage taken by 300. Gains debuff immunity one time, reduces damage taken by 400. 
Uh, man, the reduced damage taken by is such a niche effect. Like, I'm gonna be honest, there are occasionally times where this effect is useful, <laughs> but the amount of times it has actually legitimately been useful to me, I think I could count on my hands, on a singular hand. I think it was two times. Two times I've used this effect to actually legitimately reduce damage. Um... It doesn't happen very often, so the game, the debuff immunity for one time is pretty nice, but it's only one time, and then you're left with this. Not, not the, not the greatest, but also pretty easy to just slap on anyone because you're just like, I don't know, they just need to take 400, 300 damage less. It's not much, and of course, there's plenty of like things with this effect here. It's a yeah, it's not like an amazing effect that only this craft essence has. This craft essence features Guywin, Lancelot, Saber, uh, Betty, and Tristan, and it also is clearly referencing Yuri on Ice. So let's look at these boys a little bit closer, these Ice Boys, as they're called. Um, man, this is maybe the most, like, female-ridden... This actually does remind me a lot of Yuri on Ice, because these boys look like they could... Either be really into the lane leading leading lady, or they're in some kind of dojin in which they are really into each other. Either one, it works out perfectly well for you. Guy Wen has never looked this bishonen before. He has he has never looked more bishonen than he has right here. This huge this gorilla of a man, really brought down to his essences. Not even a gorilla. I wouldn't even quantify this man as a huge beefcake based on what I'm looking at here. I feel like you lose a little bit of the beef, but I think I understand because there's not a lot of like beefy dudes on ice. Um, honestly, I think there should be more beefy dudes on ice. I think the ice committee should look at the beautiful form that is beefy men and gracefully skating around on the ice, you know? Stop your prejudices. Embrace 2023. But we here you have Lancelot looking very good here. Uh, fantastic. You don't actually, I, even though I think I prefer him in his Berserker form, because I think the Berserker form is cool, it is nice to see old man Lancelot. I think this Lancelot gets the most disrespect out of it. Can we talk about real quick the way Fago treats this Lancelot? Because either he's a joke, or he's getting mad insulted. Like, do you remember that part in Lulahawa where everyone else was like, I think Tristan got like a silly good, like a silly funny moment. And then when it came to Lancelot, he got like a complete de-dressing as a person and as a man. I thought that was kind of fucked up. It didn't really fit the, the, the good vibes that were being set up. And then he had to look like an idiot in his tanned outfit. So kind of nice to see him kind of looking a little bit more refined, a little bit more mature and stuff like that. Betty looking a lot like Saber, but if Saber was just a little bit more pretty, I think that's safe to say. Yeah. Because they did used to say that one of the things, why does Betty look so much like Saber? Is that they used to say that Betty would be able to disguise himself as Saber. Um, and you can see it definitely here. He's definitely basically, he's like a, not even, because uh, <laughs> Arthur is a male Saber face, but he really does look a lot more like Saber. He's like a feminine male Saber. He's a very pretty man. Anyway, next, Tristan doesn't need to see, doesn't need his eyes open to skate in the ring. Seems extremely dangerous to me. Kind of like what he's rocking here. I wish we could see the full outfit a little bit more. Looks very blades of steel. Looks very glorious. Looks very majestic, but just not enough. I feel like there's too much clutter in these boys. Like, in theory, these round of the table boys are good boys, but they're just too close together. And I'm, you know, I'm not feeling this one personally. I do kind of like the art itself. Like I like the idea of where it's coming from, but I'm not feeling these boys. I feel like these boys deserve better. And I think they've had better in previous uh, Valentine's Day CEs. So yeah, that's how I'm feeling. That's how I'm feeling about these boys. Four good boys, of course. More good boys as you would want. Now, here is where we're getting into some of the... If you pick these boys, you are dedicated to these boys. Because these are three Cs. <laughs> you can just get them. <laughs> no, this one's the last of the four Cs. Okay, let's go. Night Parade of 100 Demons. Overcharge by NP... Stage 1, one time. Increases crit damage by 10%. Increase NP damage by 10%. And if you get a max limit broken, then you overcharge NP by one time. By one stage. Increase crit damage by 15%. Increase NP damage by 15%. 
Um, another again. Maybe it's just because of the way I play. I'm really hesitant against any ZE that does not offer a very unique effect. That is like, like for example, um, maybe this maybe this is the way I see it. But tell me how you feel about with, when it comes to specific craft essences. I feel like for the most part, if I'm looking for a craft essence that doesn't have uh, MP charge, for example. I'm looking for a very powerful CE. Like, for example, the Black Grail doesn't have any NP charge on it at all, but it does make NP strength increase by 80%. Like, there's a handoff to it being not like that. It's more powerful. Um, I do feel like all these things are individually powerful, but I feel like they're individually powerful for a skill. Like, this is uh, something you give to someone in a skill, maybe. Um... But it doesn't necessarily work for me in a craft essence kind of way because I feel like for the most part, craft essences are used to give something a little bit more. But I don't know. Not really feeling it. Even though I do think that these kind of look pretty good to me, I just don't know. I don't think there's many that combine all three. There's definitely plenty that give one of each. <laughs> but I don't know if there's many that give all three. But anyway, in terms of who's on the essence themselves, we have Muramasa, we have Suna, and we have Hijikata, the Pickle Man. In the Catboy form? Catboy Suna? I don't know how I feel about Catboy Suna. If you're a Suna fan, tell me how you feel about Catboy Suna. Hijikata. Demon Hijikata. Reminding me a lot of Gintama, and that's because I've been going through Gintama. I think this looks cool. It might be I like Hijikata more because of the character of Hijikata from Gintama, but who knows. And finally, we have Muramasa, um, who is a Tengu in this one. So kind of all three of them kind of like mythological Japanese, Oni, Kitty, and Tengu. Um, hmm, cool. A weird assortment of boys. <laughs> Very other than that, they're all from Japan. Weird assortment of dudes here. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of Murmoss himself. So you know, I'm gonna have to get to. And I'm. I don't know enough about Suna yet because I haven't actually had time to get to the new. The last stuff that he's featured on, and so I really only really know Hijikata, and really I care more about Hijikata from Gintama. Even though he does look very cool here, I kind of wish there was actually more focus on him because I think he looks the coolest out of all the characters here. Hmm, this is definitely one of those like if you are a person who loves all three of these boys, you're gonna have a time and a half with this one. But if you don't, like if you only care about one of these boys, I feel like the the disparity of the fans for each of these boys are so wide that really the person who is a fan of them would have preferred them to get a solo craft essence at that point. Like, sometimes it makes sense when you put a bunch of boys into a single CE, but sometimes they don't. And that's how I'm feeling on this one. That's my boy feeling. Caldea 11. Now, this is the start of the three star ones. I'm not even going to say what the fuck this does. Who cares? It's a three star. Feel free. <laughs> To get, I'm gonna be getting at least one of these because I'm just gonna be gr grinding like crazy to make sure I have all of them. But if you're someone who's specifically, basically, when I'm here, if you're gonna use a ticket on one of these three star craft essences, you must really love these boys. That's what I'm currently feeling like because you could easily get these from the free to play banner. And maybe easily is a little bit of over, over overstating it, but it is possible to get them from the free to play banner, which is what I plan to do to get them. But anyway. This craft essence has Nemo, Voyager, Nobukatsu, and Doman. And it's also obviously a parody of Inazuma 11, if that wasn't obvious enough with the name. Now, let's see, this art here. I like the theme of it. I don't know why Doman is here, and that makes me feel weird, because Doman's a creepy pervert. And I don't like him with these boys. This is, this is a bad boy, and I don't want this bad boy next to these good boys. This boy who cares deeply for his sister. This boy who has many boy forms, and including one of them is a girl. Yeah. And then we have Voyager as well, who is, of course, uh, a space shuttle, but still a boy. All good boys. These three boys, perfectly good. Like them together, fit very well. It's this boy that I don't trust, and I don't like, and I feel like he should get away from them. But in terms of looking like a villain, he definitely looks like a villain here. So, I'll give him that much. Nobukatsu also kind of looking like a villain, to be honest. But I feel like in this, when you look at this, this clearly sets him up as the rival. 
this is like the goalie friend and then Nemo is the main striker. That's how I'm taking it. That's my interpretation of it. And then of course Doman, creepy pervert. So next, Supreme Academy. Um what the fuck is this effect? Never mind. Oh, this is an MP charger. Not a very good one. <laughs> uh, charges MP gauge by 1% and give 3% art. Not, not the greatest. Um, this features Hans Christian Andersen, Robin Hood, Romulus Quirinus, and Caligula. Let's look at these boys. These are a good assortment of boys. I'm going to say this right now. Bold statement. Caligula looks fucking great. I love my boy Caligula. Very unpopular boy, I would think. But I like the look of him. I like his madness. I like the brief bits of sanity that he occasionally gets in two, exactly two events. <laughs> we got Hans Christian Andersen in his adult form. The form that everyone wished that they had made a skin, but they didn't because Vago hates fun. And we got Robin Hood here, looking very good. And Quirinus also looks very nice as well. Um... Not looking very Saint Seiya at the moment, but that's probably because he doesn't have the giant golden armor. This is a very nice art. This looks good together. I like the theme. These characters kind of work together in a weird way when I see all four of them in a way. Uh, so I'm going to give this a thumbs up in terms of boy quality. CE quality, not as good as boy quality because it is a three star CE. But damn, nice boys. Splat gun. Grand Salvation one time. Increased quick performance by not a lot. The Crash Assassin's features uh, Yang Quinn, Ardash, and Billy the Kid, and is clearly based off of Splatoon. <laughs> hey, you're a kid now. You're a squid now. Assassin. Oh shit. That's fine. Here we see Billy the Kid getting splatted right in the fucking face. And splatted hard. Who shot him? Who the fuck shot Billy? Because we can see here that these two are engaged in splat fun. But who shot Billy? That's my question to all of you. Who is the who is the man on the grassy knoll that shot Billy the Kid? <laughs> it shot him perfectly in the fucking head. Uh, Arash, I'm a big fan of Arash. And this guy looks cool. I think he looks cooler in his outfits than he does in terms of an actual unit. And Billy the Kid looks silly. So I think this is a good arrangement of boys, but this is a three-star C, so, you know, it is what it is. But I still feel like I needed to do due diligence and look at these boys. And finally, we have the Infinity Dream, which features Nikola Tesla, Shi Huangdi, and David. Here we go. Final boy. Hmm. Hmm. Is that really supposed to be... Oh, no, that's David. Let's say, no, is that Tesla? I thought that was actually Sherlock. Huh. It's an interesting design. Ah, I see, I see where you can kind of see from the, the fridge edges of his hair right here. That's how you can see it's Tesla, but... Hmm. I kind of like this one as well. We don't get a lot of, like, pensive Tesla. I think we get a lot of Tesla, but we get a lot of, like, current-looking Tesla. We don't get Tesla the man as the inventor very often. And so it's kind of cool to see him inventing here. Uh, I'm not sure what David, I've, other than David being here for the money, I guess he's taking a photo of the achievement here, and Sheing is kind of also here. It's a weird assortment of characters, that's for sure, but I think it fits the storytelling of what's going on here. He's invented something clearly extremely good. He wants to patent it, which is what I assume this is. This is some kind of patent. That or he's, he's an instructor, or maybe the man behind the money, and David is here to take a picture. That's what I currently feel. But yeah, good assortment of boys. Very nice art, actually. This is that. Did this artist ever do any more for us? I would be interested to learn. But anyway, that's it for the craft essences. Again, which one? Which one of these should you pick? I think choose the boy that is closest to your heart. I think that is you'll always go right if you follow your heart. And if you don't have a boy that it lives in your heart, I don't know. Get one of the five C's, maybe. Club Argonauts, maybe. No. Yeah, Club Argonauts probably. And when I look at it, yeah, it gives an ignore invincibility. <laughs> In terms of all the effects here, that, that was pretty good. That or the Dantes one might be kind of fun, funny for some quick memes, to be honest. But, yeah. Again, this it ain't about the CE quality Spider-Man. It's about the boys. And that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it very much. This was the longest video in the world. 
of talking about. It's 30 minutes of me talking about boys. If you made it this far, hey, thanks, man. You should leave a like and comment. <laughs> because this is a lot of effort to put into a very dumb idea. And I'll see you guys hopefully soon. I'm so busy with work, oh my god. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.